Welcome back fellow readers, this is Suave, and today we are going to be doing a light novel review. That's right, today we're going to be taking a look at The Great Cleric, White Collar Survival, and Another World Volume 1. This is written by Broccoli Lion, illustrated by Sime, translated by Matthew Jackson, and published by J Novel Club. Alright, so what is this story all about? To put it simply, it is an isekai in a fantasy world with RPG elements. And our guy, our main character, he dies a very tragic death in real life gets uh, reincarnated into this otherworldly plane because he died a tragic death the goddess lets him choose his class and you know she tells him all the knowledge that he needs to know about this next world so he gets the freedom to choose his abilities his class uh, nothing overpowered or anything he's he still has the little level one skills and whatnot but the cool thing is is that we learned that there are nine other people ten people in total including him that also died tragically and they get to have this same fate. Now we don't get to meet any of them, we don't know what they are, or who they are, what they get to choose, we just follow our main character. And our main character chooses to be a cleric or a healer or whatnot. Because you know, a uh, healer is someone that pretty much any party needs. You always gotta have someone to heal you up if you have injuries and whatnot. So he decides to become a cleric. So our main character is Lucio the Cleric. And so Lucio is reincarnated into this new world. He's trying to get his bearings down. He looks around, sees a nearby city, goes there, declares that he's a healer or a cleric. And immediately they kind of just back off and let him in. It's kind of strange how, they, how the people interact around healers. You get to see why in just a moment. So he goes off to the healers guild and you know the receptionists are there it's kind of a quiet guild not a whole lot of people are there and they're trying to, to explain to him the whole structure of the healer the different ranks and levels and what types of skills you're allowed to learn at this level now when you're reading through this book you almost quickly immediately realize that this is going to be a very slow paced book there's not going to be a whole lot of progress and this is going to be a very long series because you know just within the first couple of chapters you get to experience Lucio and his meditation and you know you learn about the different uh, skills and the level system and how he assesses his progress you get a lot of details within those first couple chapters those first two chapters are kind of an intro chapter but the real kicker is when you get to chapter three that's when things really start to pop off a little bit and that is because Lucio decides that he can be a cleric and whatnot but he needs to be able to defend himself if he wants to be an adventurer and go out into the world and explore things because you know he understands that life is very precious he died suddenly in his other in his previous life and he doesn't want to go through that type of traumatic experience again he wants to be able to tough it out and be able to live life to the fullest in this world he decides that he wants to be an adventurer and so he sets off to the adventurers guild and he soon realizes that this is a whole different beast compared to the healers guild over there it was super quiet there was barely anybody over there over here in the adventurers guild there's a whole lot of hardened warriors these people know how to fight they know how to survive in the wild lucio wants to be one of them so that he can go out and venture in the world the problem is that he's a healer and people don't understand why he's here and eventually he kind of negotiates his way into getting his way he wants to be able to train with them and in return he's going to provide healing services and this is where the slow crawl kind of begins a little bit because i would say three-fourths of this book is nothing but lucille training in this adventurer's guild now it's not a bad thing i think the author did a really good job in being able to give us uh, all these characters and just making this one setting very unique and very lively because we're gonna be in this setting for pretty much almost the entire book and so we are seeing Lucio he's getting beat up he's training as hard as he can and it's not just all training there's gonna be a lot of people that you meet there's gonna be the receptionist there's gonna be the cook there are the other adventurers that he meets every now and then and you see him build up a relationship with these people over time because at first he's someone who is um, very shy very timid he's not someone who's brave enough to walk up to people and just talk to them he is someone who's just very nervous being around so many people but eventually uh, he softens up to all these people because they start to realize that he's a legit healer and he wants to provide this service and the reason why they soften up to him is because in this world or pretty much in this whole society 
healers are known to be greedy people they open up clinics they open up hospitals and they provide healing services but they charge a whole lot of money in this world healing doesn't come for free and so these adventurers they rely a lot on healing because if they don't get their wounds healed and you know if they don't get cured of poison uh, potions can come and go every now and then but potions are kind of costly and not as effective as uh, clerics would be but these adventurers especially at a young age if they start getting injured they start having all these problems as they get older and they don't live very long and so that's why this adventurers guild is very grateful to have lucio here at this guild now this in itself opens up a whole new can of worms because lucio's in this guild he's training with this badass dude named broad and you know his schedule is basically just eat sleep train repeat <laughs> that's pretty much all he does every single day sometimes he'll leave the guild to maybe do an errand every now and then but for the most part he's inside he trains he eats he talks with the people you know maybe he does a little meditation in his room sleeps does it all over again and the problem is, is that he is giving this healing service to the adventurers you know they come in the evening or during the day what have you during their training they go to this basement he heals these adventurers who are looking to get some free healing and you know then they're all happy and whatnot but what's going on is the town that they're in or the city all of a sudden the nearby clinics are having a very tough time because now they're having less customers come in they're losing out on money and they are very pissed off about that so much so that it actually catches the attention of the most esteemed uh, clinic or the most esteemed doctor uh, within this whole city because he's noticing that his profits are going down and word is that there's a cleric in the one of these guilds who's providing free healing and he's just flabbergasted by this whole idea because let me give you a little taste of um what clerics like this guy do so they go into a, like a little conversation later on in the book where they explain how this guy treats his patients and so they would ask him okay if this guy had a cut in his arm what would you do and the doctor said well obviously i would do high healing I said okay what if this guy had a deep gush in his abdomen what would you do i would do high healing <laughs> so no matter what you would say whether the severity is very low very high he would always use high healing and high healing is a very high level skill and so when uh, someone like this guy uses a very high level skill he demands a whole lot of money so no matter who comes into his office he is going to do high healing he's going to charge them a flat rate of maybe like 50 or 100 gold something exorbitant like that and these people end up going broke or in some cases they get thrown into slavery because they can't pay him up so it's kind of like almost like a mob boss doctor clinic sort of thing going on and it's kind of messed up when you think about it and that's basically the gist of this whole first volume like i said the whole three-fourths of this book is lucio training in that basement and you know he does interact with people around him there's events that happen over time as he's training and there are you know there's conflict with those uh doctors and clinics that don't like him healing for free now the characters were done okay some were memorable some were not and i think it's okay for it to be that way because this story is meant to go in a certain direction and the characters that you meet in this first city are probably not the characters that you're going to see throughout the rest of the story this is going to be a very slow burn story it's going to be you know there's nine other people that we heard of in the very beginning that get reincarnated in this world so eventually we're going to probably meet those nine other people and those other nine people probably have a great influence in this story and this world and so the people that lucio meets in the beginning they're kind of like um i guess you could say his beginner town family for the most part i think these characters did their job they were supposed to be there in order to help lucio out and be able to support him before he goes off onto his big journey and you know there might be like maybe a two or three characters that might have a huge impact later on in the story just because of the nature of um i guess their importance around lucio or maybe their importance and their skill and rank in this world and so those people might come around but for the most part i think i would say 80 percent of the characters that you meet are just beginner town characters that you might not see until much later in the future so they probably won't have a huge impact in this story which is probably why they're not um, mentioned so often 
but they're mentioned often enough to the point where you kind of recognize their name when they come up but not to the point where you think oh my god i want to know more about this character <laughs> now like i said earlier i think the setting was done really well by the author even though you're inside just this one building pretty much the entire book uh so many things happen in and out of this uh place the adventures that come in are very unique uh, you know, you're always trying to patch up these people. Maybe something happens outside of this place that there's such a huge ruckus going on that Lucio is so weak to be able to go out there and help out. But as soon as they come back into the guild, they need his healing. And so at some point, you just feel like you're at home reading about Lucio being in this guild and interacting with these people and just becoming part of the family. But I really want to see where the story goes in volume two. Because I think in Japan we have eight volumes in total, so obviously this book is doing very well. It's still ongoing. Uh, I think volume eight only came out in November 2020, so you know it's still very brand new going forward. And so as someone like me who likes to see a lot of combat, you didn't get a whole lot of that here. Sometimes you did, but I really want to see what it looks like when Lucio is actually in combat and he starts to level up and just to see how he progresses that way when he's out in the wild. And I want to see how he interacts with those other nine people that are supposedly revived in this world at the same time that he did. So with that, we move on to my final verdict. Now my final verdict for this book is that it is a fun read. Uh, you know, I was very engaged reading about Lucio and his training and the people he interacts with and the stuff that happens around him. But overall, you have to remember that this book is a foundational world building book. It is setting up the stage so that you can have fun with the future volumes. And so depending on who you are, you might be wanting to get on top of the game and get that first volume so that you can be ready for the next volume. Or you might be someone who wants to wait a little bit and get two or three volumes at a time so that you can actually enjoy the story as it progresses. So if you're someone who wants to jump into a grand story where the main character is a cleric inside this isekai fantasy uh, RPG like world then this is a story that you need to pick up. And that is The Great Cleric White Collar Survival in Another World. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about this title. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. We're going to be bringing more light novel reviews very, very soon. With that being said, I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.